John here. It's Thursday, so I'm starting a new series, and it's gonna be Sweet Picking Thursdays. Really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? But I just needed a name for it, and I'm gonna cover sweet picking advice on this day. In this lesson, I'm gonna cover the basics of sweet picking, and especially focusing on the right hand, and just give you some tips on how to stay relaxed and finding your perfect picking motion, and how you should approach it when you practice. Because the right hand is really what I see go wrong most of the time from my students where they start separating the pick strokes and things like that. To help you out with this I have a practice routine that you can add to your own practice and if you do this for a few weeks I'm 100% sure you will see a big difference in your sweep picking. Even if you're kind of used to sweep picking this is a good routine because you go through a lot of different combinations in the left hand as well. <laughs> Right, so here's the slow version. We start on the seventh fret of the A string. So this lick is in E minor and we have superimposed arpeggios here. And what that means just means that you play another kind of arpeggio than the one based on the root note. So it's like an extension, but without you having to play a huge arpeggio. So for example, we start here with the E minor seven one. And the next one will be a G major seven one. But when you play that over the E note, you're gonna hear the intervals as minor third, fifth, flat seven, and ninth. So that the net effect of this will be that it sounds like an E minor ninth arpeggio without you having to play five notes in actual shape because it sort of picks out the, the good notes. Because if you're playing this over, over an E, for example, you will al already have the E ringing in the background. Uh, and then we extend that even further by playing an E uh, B minor seven arpeggio. In this case, the intervals will be in relationship to the root, be the fifth, flat seven, ninth and then the eleventh so basically the whole arpeggio lick will uh, amount to an E minor 11 sound so the cool thing about this is that you don't need to learn any new shapes to play bigger arpeggios you can just stack shapes you already know from different scale degrees I'm not gonna get into the theory behind this right now I'm gonna cover that at some point. All right, so we have two different shapes in this one, even though I'm playing three shapes. And that's because the first shape is the same shape as the third shape. So once you know this one, you basically know two thirds of the lick. Uh, so this shape then is seven, 10 on the A string, nine on the D string, seven on the G string, eight on the B string, seven on the E string and 10 on the E string. So, the way that I pick this is down, hammer, down, 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 up, and then slide. So, and I'm sliding up to 14, and then I'm going up in the next shape, going down in the next shape, which is a G major 7. So we have 14, 10, 12, 11, 12, 14, 10. So, all together. I'm gonna restart the same kind of deal here. So downstroke, and then going up the same way picking-wise. Then slide up to 17, and then go down the same shape we did here, but from 17 instead. Then restart it again. So the only difference here at the end is that I don't slide up, I actually pick the last note, just to get that final finality of the, the lick basically. So I'm going. But that's up to you, however you want to do it. So again from the beginning. So try this out over an E minor chord or an E drone or an E minor backing track where you hang out on the E minor for a while. And I think you will like the sound of it.
you want tabs for this one and all the previous lessons as well as all the upcoming lessons and some bonuses you can go to my teachable site you have the link below and sign up for my youtube lesson series also posting everything on my patreon so if you'd rather go there you can do that and then you'll also get access to the huge lesson library containing hundreds of different lessons all right so this is the first sweeping video so i want to start with some sweeping 101 uh, the most important thing to focus on when you practice sweeping is to get the correct right hand technique and that has less to do with the motion you're using but it has more to do with how you practice when you practice slowly and what you want to focus on is that your pick always falls to the next string because if you don't do that you're basically going to do separate downstrokes or separate upstrokes so you kind of want to watch out for any type of motion in the opposite direction but if you do this really slowly to a metronome uh, just mute the strings like this and then just let the pick fall it's a very effective exercise it looks really simple but it's very effective just to make sure you get that feel right and also try not to dig in too much that's another thing that i see a lot so at any point when you start to feel any type of tension in your right hand you want to just pull back uh, turn the volume down mute the strings and just go like this try to find a fast and smooth motion in the right hand and you'll feel that when you get this it's a very easy technique for the right hand so you know even your non-guitar playing friends should be able to sit down with a guitar put the pick like this and just let it go that's basically the motion and as you can see here it's quite a fast sweep so the problem isn't really speed in the right hand it's more about uh, controlling the the rhythmic subdivision in the right hand and also uh, in conjunction with that syncing up the left hand right so whenever you feel tension or you start to feel like you're digging in too much just pull back to this very easy motion and as you can see here as well i'm doing quite pronounced pick slanting but that's fine if you look at frank gambali does the same and i mean he's the best sweet picker around pretty much so it's just a natural thing for the pick to want to be like this for whatever reason so don't fight that just go with it and i think you'll find that you'll find your personal sweeping technique that's relaxed and it doesn't have to look like mine or anyone else's it's just about you finding what you feel is comfortable because after all you're gonna fit this into your own playing so try that if you feel that the right hand gets stuck So, as usual, I have a little practice routine here that you can use to work on this aspect of sweeping. We're going to do this over three strings only. And I'm going to do this with sort of a semi-systematic way, but it's, it's not exhausting every combination because we don't really need to. But I think it's good to start synchronizing the left and right hand right away. But when you do this, I want you to really focus on always falling to the next string. So, no consecutive up or down strokes all right i would also suggest that you start this at like 60 to 80 bpm so you just play quarter notes and really try to get into that habit of being relaxed so here's the routine we're going to use the same fingerings as we used in the previous video with the legato stuff but now we're going to use it for sweeping so recap okay. is going to be one two three one two four one three four two three four and the sequence is going to go like this so I'm going to start here on the 7th fret of the low E string. When you practice this at a home, I really suggest you do it in the 5 different zones I've been talking about. So if you haven't seen that, go back to my other videos. Uh, and actually I probably should do it from the 9th fret, since that's part of the actual zones. So the 9th fret it is. Okay, so first we're going to start with 1, 2, 3. We're just going to go like this. So from the E string, and then A string. D string. I look at my pick, I'm falling to the next string. Right? So that's all you have to do for the, for the ascending thing. Then we turn it around. Still one, two, three. So you do that, I would suggest twice. You just go like this. Then you just keep going with the right hand. So the right hand pattern is not going to change. But now you change to one, two, four instead. And do it again, starting on one, three, four. And finally, two, three, four. 
When you're done with that, you restart one, two, three, but you reverse it. So you go three, two, one, three, two, one. Again, twice. And then you guessed it, one, two, four, but backwards. Four, two, one, four, two, one. And that concludes the lowest string group. Then you simply go up to the next string group, do it again. So you, again, I'm gonna play through the entire thing now while calling out the, the actual fingerings, if I can do it. So one, two, three. One, two, four. One, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, two, one. Four, two, one. Four, three, one. 4, 3, 2. Then restart on the D string. So on everything and then you do the G string. I would do this in the five positions. So starting on the first fret, fifth, ninth, thirteen, and seventeen. Because it doesn't take that long to do. So I think it's worth doing that. But again, do it really slowly and make sure you don't get any type of separation of the pick strokes and obviously you shouldn't have any background noise and you shouldn't hear any kind of, of this bleeding bleeding uh, together of the notes either so basically you just want one note sounding at a time if that's not obvious if you enjoyed this lesson you can go and sign up for my newsletter where i share exclusive lessons that you won't see anywhere else not even here on my youtube and you'll also get access to 17 different lessons right away covering alternate picking, hybrid picking, sweep picking and legato as well as a full solo all in tabs and downloadable Guitar Pro. As usual I want you to try this for at least a couple of weeks then report back to me and tell me what you thought about it and if you think it sucks you can write that as well but I'm 100% sure if you practice this correctly meaning as I outlined it and you don't do it quicker than you can do it cleanly, you will get a lot of benefit out of this. So give it a try and tell me how it went. But also as usual, please post some comments about your biggest issues when it comes to sweep picking or any other technique really. But it's, it's good for me to know where your issues lie so I know what to focus on in future lessons. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.